Hi friends! Today is gonna be our vlog for the Summer Scare Readathon. If I told you that it was currently Tuesday, would you be surprised for a readathon that starts on a Monday? Probably not. Okay. I had a TBR, but uh, obviously not sticking very strictly to that already because that's how I live my life. Um, so the very first book that I finished was Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney. Um, this is the book club pick for the Wheatberry Books, which is my local bookstore's book club for this month. Um, and it fit the theme. So I was like, you know what? Might as well go ahead and get that in this week while I can because I've got so many other things to do. Get it in while you can. I also started reading last night, which volume 10, I am on page 44 of like 250. So one fifth into this. I then began reading, what was I reading? A Lullaby for Witches by Hester Fox, which I DNF'd at 25% because I was bored out of my mind. I just wasn't having a great time. It was really boring and just was not having fun. And you know, the whole point of the readathon is to have fun. And if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. So that happened. And so when I DNF'd A Lullaby for Witches, I was like, okay, let's find another adult thriller. So I picked up The Secret Next Door. I'm currently at about 30% ish. I need to check, but I think that's, I'm going based off of like the circle graph on uh, Scribd. Uh, it, it looks at about the 30% mark. That's, that's my <laughs> scientific way of deciding where I'm at. Um, also considering DNFing that, um, <laughs> here's the thing. I am so tired of adult thriller mystery books having drunks for main characters. So the whole crux of this story is it's this fancy community um, and this woman and her husband and her five-year-old son moved to that town. They ain't got enough money to be there. They're probably she's mad because he's always working but she forced him to buy a house there that was more than what he knew they could afford so he has to work more because he, they can't afford the house but she's mad because he's always at work go figure she's a terrible mother um she kept her child out of school um until kindergarten and he doesn't even know what letter sounds are like he when he got to school in kindergarten he didn't know what any letters were like couldn't even name a letter okay because she hadn't worked with him like obviously there are children who are kids learn at different different rates um, so like, you know, if, if you're working with your kid and they're not, you know, picking it up as quickly as other kids, that's fine. But like, she had never even tried to teach him anything. She just wanted to keep him at home with her and like snuggle the hell out of him and then tried to send him off to kindergarten with these other kids who had been in preschool for like three years because they're living in like the elite society, whatever. And you know, they pawn their kids off as soon as they can. Anyway, they move into this town. She's a shit mom. Uh, her marriage is falling apart. There's another family in the town that has a five-year-old, a 13-year-old, and a 17-year-old. These two families don't like each other from the get-go. They're both very passive-aggressive, the moms, very passive-aggressive and just ugh, horrible personalities. And then the 13-year-old son of the other mother, is found dead in a pond. The, none of this is spoilers. It's, it's on the, it's, it's the synopsis of the book. Like that's, that's the synopsis. That's where we're at so far. But conveniently, like the mom of the five-year-old who's a bad mom, like the night that the kid was found in the lake, she was blackout drunk. She doesn't remember drinking. She doesn't know how she got blackout drunk. She was just blackout drunk and it just ended up at her house in the bathroom, woke up there, don't know how she woke up there and doesn't know how she got home. And I, I'm just so tired of that plot device like that's not a plot device that's an excuse like you couldn't think of a better thing to do to like put suspicion on your main character than to just have them be blackout drunk for no reason I'm tired of it I'm I'm so done with it absolutely over it so that's where I'm at at 30% and I'm honestly considering DNFing that book as well if I do I'm going to switch to something I don't know middle grade something else because the last two books have just not been it that's where i'm at uh it's almost time for dinner i need to start work reading um 
tip of foe for Wallace because I have to have that to Wallace by Friday. So that's what I'm going to do for the remainder of my evening. Work on reading tip of foe and work on eating because it's like eight o'clock. I just got home from the grocery store. Um, my bestie needed uh, someone to watch the small human while she had a doctor's appointment. So I got to snuggle with my nephew and then we went to the grocery store together. So am I getting anything done? No. Did I get nephew snuggles? Yes. Also, I got food. So do I need to do a lot more things? Yes. But am I happy with where I am at? Also, yes. So I shall be reading to Pho. Um, I have a candle I need to light and I have some tea I need to drink um, to get me set in the mood for Tip of O and I will be doing that after dinner. I will bring you along because why not? Okay so ignore my messy ass desk. We're gonna pretend like it doesn't exist right now. Um, I have tea in my which is brew mug. Yes it's tea. Don't come for me. I put too much cream in it. It's fine. But yes, Witch's Brew. This is the, um, I'll put the thing on the screen, the brand that it is. It's a hot cinnamon spice by Pacific brand that Wallace recommended. Um, and then we also have this candle that is Spiced Pumpkin Latte, which is a coconut wax blend. Bougie perfume. It's a bougie perfume. I just want you to know that. If you hear weird noises, we've been joined by Gordon this evening. Uh, so we're gonna open this guy and uh, light a candle. I have opened this box before and the candle is gorgeous. Um, it just can you see the steam coming off of that tea? It's gonna be a minute before I can drink it anyway. Um, this candle, gorgeous, lovely. We're gonna light her. And then we're going to read some books, or a book, a specific book. And I'll update you in a little bit on how she smells. Okay, it's 11 p.m. Where are we? I am currently on, I'm going to call it page 48 out of 282. I just, um, for Tifo, I took the page numbers from the Word document. That's what we're rolling with. Uh, so I'm on page 48 of 284. Not doing too bad. Read for about 50 minutes. But it's like bedtime because I had more things to do tonight than I had expected. If you don't know, Tip of o is, um, this book is for October. It's a book that Wallace is writing for her sister um, that is just like very Halloween-y, like total Halloween-y. I'll link Wallace's video down below. Um, she has like a whole thing where she talks about everything including the plot. Basically this is a book that she's just writing for her sister's enjoyment and not really writing it with any publishing plans um, but I am having the absolute best time reading it and if nothing else it solidifies for me how much I was not enjoying A Lullaby for Witches and The Secret Next Door so much so that I have decided to yes I will be DNFing The Secret Next Door. Um, I was not having a great time. It was awful. Um, I hated all, I hated the characters. I am at 30%. I did check. Um, so I'm going to DNF that too. Moving on. Like just, I don't have time for bad books. I don't, I don't have time for books I don't like. And I'm having a really good time reading Tip of Foe. Like a lot of fun. And like I said, I'm only 48 pages in. So, um, like I'm not super far in, but it's, it really is just exactly what I'm looking for. Not necessarily during the summer scare readathon because it's not scary. It may get there. I don't know. Um, but definitely what I'm looking for when I'm looking for like fall feels. So 100% here for it. Am I here for the tea? Not 100% sold. I definitely want to try it again without dairy product in it. Um, I shouldn't have put a dairy product in it, Jessica. It is a spice tea and I don't know that dairy really goes with it. I, I have other I want to try some other ways uh, not a fan of it in the way that I made it this round but um, you know there's always tomorrow I gotta read some more of Tipifo tomorrow so there's always tomorrow uh, speaking of tomorrow I'm gonna need to pick a new audiobook what audiobook are we gonna go for tomorrow oh you know what just came out today is the new 
um, Kate Alice Marshall, These Fleeting Shadows. And I pre-ordered the audiobook for that from Libro. Download that. So I'll listen to These Fleeting Shadows um, by Kate Alice Marshall. I read uh, Rules for Vanishing last year during October and loved it. I'm excited for that one. And like I said, it just came out today. So I'll read that one instead. I need to figure out what all of these books are for um, prompt wise because I don't know that I'm hitting any prompts. Uh, just because I'm DNFing all the books. It's fine. I'll just fill, fill in other things and we'll just move on with our lives. So um, that's where I'm at for this evening. Tomorrow will be these feeling shadows um, while I'm driving and doing, you know, the menial tasks. And then um, tomorrow night back to Tipifo. I'm hoping I can finish it tomorrow night when I actually have, I should have like a solid four hours to read tomorrow. So I should be able to finish it, but we'll see. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hi friends, welcome to Wednesday. So this morning I started reading These Fleeting Shadows by Kate Alice Marshall and I finished it today. It is currently about 5.30. Uh, as I said, I'm alone in the office this week so I've just been listening to my book while I've been doing paperwork um, and having a great time. Uh, These Fleeting Shadows... <laughs> These Fleeting Shadows is about a girl named Helen who is from a family that has like this um, ancestral estate home and her and her mother ran from the house when she was like seven and there was like weird things going on there and her mom has never really taken her back. Uh, her grandfather dies so they have to go back to the house to bury her grandfather and they find out that she, Helen has inherited the house and in order for her to inherit the house they have to stay there for a year and then they start finding out all of the creepy things about her family and their house and and it's creepy um the book is super spooky super creepy YA horror <laughs> made my skin crawl five stars fantastic loved every minute of it I listened to the audiobook and the thing about this book is that there are like these creatures that are part of the house. I think they call them fragments or figments and they sometimes they talk to you right and so in the audiobook like in the paper book like in the book book um the author like describes what the voices sound like um like whether they echo or they crackle or like whatever the sound is so in the audiobook they added in those sound effects to their voices it is so creepy <laughs> i loved it i had a great time i think that was a fantastic decision on the uh producer's part of the audiobook it was just fantastic to add in just those like the echo and the crackle and the creak and the just like the vibrations and the voices and ugh, makes your skin crawl it was, it was it was fantastic it was a great time uh so I finished reading that uh I think I'm calling that my book with a spooky word in the title um because I DNF'd the one I had originally planned to use for that and then I started reading Empire of Wild by I'm going to say Shuri Dymaline, French Canadian and Indigenous peoples. So I'm going with Dymaline. Dymaline. So I know this book is based off of um, the Indigenous peoples um, legend of the Rougarou, um, which <laughs> I think my knowledge of the Rougarou extends solely to the TV show Supernatural. So, <laughs> I think, I, anyway, it, it's a, it's a creature that like haunts the roads in the woods and I think it eats people. I don't know. Anyway, um, so this main character, she lives in this community. Um, she's in her late thirties, I think. She's married. Um, her family is, um, very immersed in their culture and her husband goes missing and he's been missing for a year at where the point where the story starts and um the synopsis basically says that she is out one day looking for her husband um she's been looking for him since he went missing 
and she finds a man who looks like him and sounds like him but he says he's someone different and he doesn't have any of her husband's memories um and he's a man of god and and is christian and thinks that he's like the salvation of the planet i don't know um so i'm very interested to see where this one goes i have only read um about 10 percent so far um so i'm not far enough in like i'm I'm far enough in to know that if it's like an immediate DNF, which it's not, but I'm not far enough to know how I feel about it yet. So I'll definitely continue reading that, um, maybe possibly tonight, but if not tomorrow. Um, tonight I'm going to be working on Tivifo again, hopefully finishing that tonight, but we'll see what happens. If not, I'll finish it tomorrow night. Um, I definitely want to have it done by the end of night tomorrow night. Um, I have some other things I need to do tonight. Uh, Kate just messaged me on the drive home and was like, can we push AuthorTube chat back another week? We were blessed with five Tuesdays in, in August. Can we push it clear to the fifth Tuesday? We usually do um, the third Tuesday of the month and we pushed it to the fourth because we were like, we have five. Let's do, let's do the fourth Tuesday. We need more time. And now we're both like, we have a 1300 brick book to read. We've had four months. Let's push back another week. <laughs> we're falling apart. It's fine. Um, we'll get there eventually. So that's good news at least. That makes me feel a little more calm, um, a little less stressed. So I uh, definitely have at least one more audiobook that I may get to this week, depending on how long it takes me to read Empire of Wild. And then this weekend I'm gonna hit, uh, I'm gonna hit these guys pretty hard. Um, I'm gonna read at least one of the witch books. I definitely am gonna read Vampire Problems and I'm definitely going to read at least one book in the Sweep series this weekend. Um, Cause they're all fairly short. If I read one of these Vampire Problems and a um, Sweep series book that's basically the equivalent of just like a regular 400-ish page book. So. Hopefully, I'm able to get all that in this weekend. I don't know. We're going to see what happens. Off I go to read things. Okay, so a thing happened. Uh, basically, it's Thursday now. Uh, Wednesday, did I get any reading done after we talked? Um, I read a little bit of Chebifo, but then uh, <laughs> Sam reminded me that we were having a write-a-thon meeting um, to go over the next round and just write a thought on things okay um so I spent like three hours chatting with Sam and Fox about write a thought on things so did I finish reading anything no uh did I read anything today yes yes I did so I just finished reading Tibifo I'm gonna count this for my a read that makes you uncomfortable because I am reading this for a friend as a beta reader and that can be a very uncomfortable situation especially if you end up not liking the book which was not the case here but agreeing to read someone's work can be very uncomfortable. So I'm going to count this for my uncomfortable read. I have sprints tonight at 7 30 which is about 45 minutes from now I need to eat dinner and then I am going to during my first sprint write my review letter to Wallace and kind of let her know my thoughts of Tipifo. I also on my drive to and from work today listened to about another 40-ish pages of Empire of Wild. <sighs> Liking it less now than I did in the beginning but for me it's like a word choice thing like there are just certain things that have been said that I'm just like that's not for me like it's not it's not a choice that I would have taken it's just a preference thing and I have that sometimes with adult horror type books um things that are not my choice so it's not bad it's just not exactly what I want I probably will finish reading it anyway because at this point I've DNF so many books you know that I was just like not having fun with at least this one's interesting and I want to know what's going on so it's got more going for it than the other things that I didn't finish this week um it just has some creative choices that aren't my style and that's fine 
So I'm going to get to dinner and then during the sprints I'm going to, as I said, write my letter to Wallace and then I am going to work on, if I can get it over here, um, which, 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 I'm going to work on this. My goal is to finish this book tonight, which I have about 200 pages left of, but it's a graphic novel. So that's my goal for me this evening. And I'll update y'all when I know more. Time for a pre-bedtime update. During the live streams, I wrote like my reactions to Wallace, um, answered some questions that she had, um, basically just giving her an idea of what I thought of the book and um, what I thought um, her sister might enjoy things like that uh, because it's specifically for her sister. I'm sure I mentioned that. Um, then during the live sprints I worked on which volume 10. Um, I have since finished this. It is about 11 o'clock so this is going to be it for me for the night. Um, but I, I finished volume 10 and I also picked up Because You Love to Hate Me. I don't know if it's the format of this or what it is but I there are like a couple of authors in here that I was interested in reading their story specifically and I ended up kind of like skim reading through a couple of them and I'm gonna call it a day on this one just not not having it not interested not having it not uh I'm just gonna move on with my life okay the witch book is going to count for a mid-grade, I think. I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's what it's going to count for. It depends on what else I read the rest of the week, you know? Um, but I think that's where it's going to end up at. But that is going to be it for me tonight. Um, tomorrow I'm going to try to finish my audiobook and at least one more of the short books tomorrow evening. Um, whether it's Vampire Problems or the next book in the Sweep series. Not sure which, but I'm going to try to read one of those tomorrow night. So, wish me luck. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. I am home from work and I have some updates. It's Friday. Hokey dokey. First off, last night when I went to bed, uh, Laura had talked about reading the vampire chapter, which is a book, like a kid's book and that it was like very short and it had a really funny punchline. So naturally I was interested. So I read the vampire chapter before I went to bed last night, um, basically while I was sitting in bed and laughed at the punchline myself. It was kind of funny um, and I enjoyed it. It was a good read. It was very short. It was like, it's like a 12 minute audiobook that gives you any indication of how short it actually is. And then this morning on the way to work, I was listening to, I can't even remember the name of the book now. It has left my brain, Empire of Wild. And I have decided to DNF that. Um, it's just very vulgar, um, which is not my brand of horror. Um, I like more psychological type things. And I think it definitely had like a psychological flair to it. But just the characters and their, um, the way they talked, like a lot of the things they said was just really vulgar and not my jam. Um, so I left that. Um, because that was by an indigenous author, I wanted to read something else by an indigenous author, which is something that I do try to do, especially during a readathon, if I had like a diverse author planned. Um, and the book doesn't go the way that I had hoped, then I will pick up something um, from someone with a similar diversity. So I went with a mid-grade Indigenous author, um, which is, I think it's pronounced Joseph Bruchek? Bruchek. I think so. Um, and the book is The Legend of Skeleton Man, and it was um, two books, Skeleton Man and The Return of Skeleton Man. It was okay. I liked the culture parts of it, but the plot was a little lacking in my opinion, even for a mid-grade. Like I know that anytime you say like a plot is not great in a mid-grade, you're like, yeah, because it's made for eight-year-olds. You know how I feel about it. 
Um, but even for me who reads a lot of mid-grade, I felt like even an eight-year-old would be like, I don't know that this plot was very entertaining. So it's definitely spooky and it's definitely got like a cultural aspect to it. But as far as the plot goes, was not my favorite, um, but was a very good book. I still gave it four stars. So uh, that's where I'm at so far today. Um, I read that on audio in the afternoon while I was doing paperwork. And so the next project is Vampire Problems, which I have not started. And it is like 170-ish pages. So I could probably read this whole thing tonight. Um, should I read this whole thing tonight? I probably, since I've been doing so good on books this week, should write tonight. But I'm not gonna. I'm gonna, just gonna keep reading and hope for the best. Uh, and see where I end up with. So I'm definitely gonna try to read this one tonight. I have been DNFing things left and right though, so who knows. Uh, and if I end up putting this down, I will either read the next book in the Sweep series, or no, that's definitely what I would read next because that's for my last prompt, I think. It's a book with Moon and Stars on the cover. So my final prompt that I need to hit be the next book in the sweep series so that's where I am I'm gonna read this and then I'll update y'all in a little bit hey friends it's 8 p.m. on Saturday a thing happened um I got talking to Julie and Amber and reading my book and I forgot that you existed if I'm being honest again we're not on a tripod because I live my life dangerously I started reading vampire problems last night haven't finished it yet had to work today I was reading an audiobook uh, that was not part of the readathon, but I needed an audiobook because I was had a long drive to and from work today. And I DNF'd that book when I got home, so like, doing great on DNFs. My battery's flashing at me, so that's always a good thing. Um, getting ready to start reading more of Vampire Problems. So, that's where I'm at. This has been a crazy vlog, right? It's all over the place, except I've been in this chair the whole time great time. I'm gonna have to charge my battery. So see you when my battery's charged. Friends, it's been a week, okay? I said I would be back after my battery charged. I'm pretty sure that was Saturday. Today's Monday. It's 10 p.m. Let's wrap this up, okay? So what happened on Saturday was I DNF'd another book. And when I DNF'd that book, I was like, girl, you have DNF'd 20 books in the last six weeks literally have dnf's 20 books in six weeks and i was like maybe you need to take a break <laughs> so i decided to spend the remainder of my saturday evening and my sunday just chilling working on writing taking a breather from books because i just i need a breather um i've dnf'd a literal crap ton of books so the bonus to that is that i after thinking about it remembered that I had read a book that actually had a moon on the cover on Saturday or maybe Friday I don't remember um, so I technically completed all of the challenges so we're gonna go over what I read and what challenges what prompts it fulfilled and we'll also probably talk about the books that I DNF because why not uh okay okay so the first book that I finished this week was Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney. I ended up giving that a 2.5 out of 5 stars. Um, it was okay, but I didn't really like it. It was not my favorite. I didn't like the characters, and I was a lot bored throughout the story. Also, unreliable narrators, you know, all those things. Didn't have the best time. But that fulfilled the prompts of being a horror slash thriller. So we took it. I then DNF'd A Lullaby for Witches at I think 20%, 25%. That's far. Again, I was just bored. I uh, wasn't in love with the writing, not in love with the characters, didn't really care about the main character in modern day because I felt like she was kind of being a moron and I was bored. So dnf this guy i then read these fleeting shadows by 
Kate Alice Marshall, which was not on my original TBR, but the book came out on Tuesday. So I read it on Tuesday. And I gave that a 4.75 out of 5 stars. Uh, Kate Alice Marshall has this fantastic job of just making very creepy YA. It's not just that it's like, if you like psychological um, with a little bit of magic type stories um, and you like that in your horror, then I would definitely recommend it. It's not gory and it's not like weirdly sexually explicit type horror. It's just like creepy horror, um, which you don't get a lot in adult. So I like her horror books because it's less of the things I don't like and more of the things I do like. So if you have a similar taste in horror to me, you might enjoy Kate Alice Marshall. Uh, very good. Loved it. Uh, read that for the spooky word in the title because shadows. I then read and am counting um, Wallace's book. This book is for October. You all have seen it in the vlog a lot. Um, I read that for the prompt of outside of my comfort zone uh, because anytime I have to beta read for a friend it is a little squee moment um, because not in this case because I ended up loving uh, this book is for October. I didn't rate it because I don't feel like you should rate a beta read, um, but I had a fantastic time. It's probably one of my favorite things I've ever read. So, so good and just like so up my up my alley, like fantastic. So yes, outside of my comfort zone, because you never know what you're going to get. Like sometimes, you know, you're like afraid to read for a friend because you may not like it. Again, not the case here, but it can be outside of your comfort zone for that reason. I then read which volume 10, which we're counting for a mid grade and green on the cover. I give this a three out of five stars. If you remember the TV show when we were kids, which I think it actually came out in like 2003. So I was like 16, whatever. Um, if you remember the show from when we were younger, it basically follows that storyline, but takes it a lot farther. The TV show, I think only ever made it through like maybe volume six, um, maybe and I'm on volume 10. This one was one of my least favorites of the ones I've read so far but still good. Uh, for my book about vampires slash a book under 200 pages I read The Vampire Chapter by Michael Dahl. It's very short. It's a 12 minute audiobook. I read it. It was like 72 pages but there was like maybe three lines on each page. Laura read it and thought it was funny and had like had a funny punchline so of course I had to download it and read it. Uh, my original intention for a vampire prompt was vampire problems, which I have been reading and I am enjoying. I just haven't finished it yet because again, I just, I'm a little over reading, but I'm sure that you would love to hear this first line because it's fantastic. And I'm sure that India wouldn't care if I read you the first line. The reveal of the supernatural community had been mostly accidental and like most catastrophes in the world, could be traced back to one idiot who felt he could speak on behalf of people he most certainly couldn't. The idiot in this instance was named Dave and lasted about as well as you would imagine anyone could after dragging a bunch of pissed off creatures of the night out of the metaphoric supernatural closet. Technically it's the first two lines, but I read that and was like, absolutely yes. Um, there's been, I'm on chapter eight, I'm on page 52 of like 170. Um, so I'm actually pretty far into it and have been really enjoying it. I just needed to take a break from reading. Um, so I do plan to finish this. This was my original intention to read um, for vampire prompts and I do believe I talked about it in the vlog a little bit so I just want to let you know where I was at with that since we were on the vampire prompt. I then DNF'd Empire of Wild by Cherie Dimeline and I believe we've talked about this as well. Um, it just was very vulgar for me. Um, I'm not a prude and I don't mind things being like a little crass but it was a, like multiple things that were just like real vulgar and I was like ooh. I don't like that. And it just kind of kept happening. And I was like, you know, I'm not really interested in this right now. And it's a little vulgar for me and I'm not having a good time. And I don't want to keep reading things if I'm not having a good time. So I stopped reading. I then read The Legend of Skeleton Man by Joseph Bruchak. And it was for a diverse to me read because it is an indigenous author and an indigenous main character and also has a moon and stars on the cover. Uh, I ended up giving that 3.75 out of 5 stars. I really liked the first story, 
the second story was not as good. So it was technically, so the legend of Skeleton Man is Skeleton Man and the return of Skeleton Man in a bind up. Um, the first book was good. The second book was not as good. The second book was a little meh, but um, overall, I think for mid grade was really good. And the culture aspect of it was definitely there. Did we miss any prompts? Middle grade, green on the cover, horror, thriller, moon and stars, outside of my comfort zone, under 200 pages for keyword and title, diverse to me about vampires. Nope, that was all of them. I also ended up DNFing this week uh, because you love to hate me. I read the beginning of a couple of the stories and was just like, no, I'm good. I read the ones by authors that I like and didn't even necessarily finish those. I also DNF'd The Secret Next Door by Rebecca Taylor. Uh, I DNF'd this at, sorry if I keep looking away from the camera, I'm, my computer screen is right here and it holds all my answers. I don't have much of a memory today. There's a lot of shit going on um, that I'll tell you all about later. Um, because you love to hate me, Secret Next Door, 30%. I was 30% into this when I basically what I chose to do um, because there was like the one thing I wanted to know was who the killer was and I thought you know just go to the back of the book and look and see who the killer is I'll look to see who the killer was and I was like I'm so glad I didn't waste my time reading this book okay I despite the fact that I read The House Across the Lake last month and really enjoyed it because it has an unreliable narrator due to alcoholism I'm just really over like the alcoholism, like that being the main focus of why you're not sure what actually happened to someone. Like if it's a part of what happened, sure. But like the main character in this gets blackout drunk at a book club and wakes up the next morning in her bathroom and some kid was murdered that night. And so she has no recollection of the night before and doesn't know what she did and doesn't know if it was her, if it was someone else or like how everything's connected. And it's like, that's your whole plot device to not knowing how the person died. And so this was much more of like a domestic drama than a thriller or um, it just was not what I was going for. So the other book that I DNF'd was not part of the readathon, but I was reading, I was out of audiobooks and I needed an audiobook Saturday. Uh, and I DNF'd The Star Touched Queen by Roshni Jakshi at like 25 ish percent. Um, again, not having a good time, not interested, didn't care. And so I think I'm being very apathetic to stories in general. So that to me says I need to take a break. Does that bode well for me who needs to read The Count of Monte Cristo in the next two weeks? No, it doesn't. Um, but it might be the only thing I read in the next two weeks. So I don't know. I'm just kind of like in a weird, weird place and things are only getting weirder. That's where we're at. That's, that's me. That's, that's what I've got. Let me know in the comments below if you did the readathon with me, if you've read any of these spooky books, if you would like to discuss them with me, I would love to talk about them with you. If you did the readathon and you were posting on Instagram or posting on YouTube. I thank you so very much for joining me. Uh, I had a really good time looking at everybody's posts on Instagram and seeing what everybody was reading and for the most part it looks like everybody had a good time and was enjoying what they were reading so I'm glad to see that you all are reading spooky books with me and you were having a good time. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below and until then I'll see you guys next time. Bye. My heart is so hollow.